Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. It is Thursday, it's almost the end of the week, and we are back to do some drawing and painting and answering questions. So I hope you guys are ready. It's gonna be a good one today. I'm gonna to be doing a human. People are always saying, I do too many animals, I don't do humans. And uh, so I wanna do this big Viking warrior. I just thought it'd be fun. I actually started doing some sketching earlier. I got a little thing prepared. But um, uh, it's gonna be fun. I've had a really, we've had a great week. And I hope you guys have had a great week as well. And uh, today, uh, Dustin, my uh, trusty side cohort, is still on vacation. So we've got Vedanta Sproston here with us today. Say hi, Vedanta. Hi. And, uh, and then we've got Nick over in Sarasota. Uh, he's going to be answering questions as well from some of the other platforms. Uh, but, um, oh, I want to mention, like I always do, sorry, over the last few weeks I've been mentioning the same thing over and over, but I really want to see you guys there. We've got our big master class coming up here in Orlando in just a couple of weeks, August 3rd and 4th, that's a Saturday and Sunday, down at the Repertory Theater in downtown Orlando. I'm going to be giving uh, two days uh, master class and I'm going to be talking about career. I'm going to be talking about character design, digital painting, story, everything that I've covered over my last 35 years in the animation industry. I want to talk to you, or 31 years, sorry. I want to be talking to you guys about. And, uh, and I want to share it with you. I want to see you. I want to meet you in person. So uh, go to creatureartteacher.com backslash uh, Orlando 2019 and you'll get all kinds of information on it there and if you're a student or a teacher you're gonna get up to fifty dollars off on a two-day pass so go check that out I want to see you seats are limited so go and check it out and that's uh, creatureartteacher.com backslash Orlando 2019 alright so I want to get that out of the way and I'll probably mention it again later and uh, I'm hoping my friend uh, my good old buddy Jim Jackson. Have I ever mentioned Jim Jackson to you before, Bedanta? I don't know that you have. <laughs> well, you know that I have, so I'm hoping Jim Jackson is listening right now. Uh, Jim Jackson's a good buddy of mine. Uh, I think he's the 11th man to have ever walked on the moon. I was going to say moon. the 11th man to ever walk yeah. on the moon, right? Mm -hmm. Well, he um, he's listening from Connecticut because he's an animator up at Blue Sky Studios. He's going to be doing a course for us very soon. And I want you guys to know Jim Jackson. He, uh, we, we worked together on The Lion King and all kinds of stuff, you know, over the last 20, almost 30 years, actually. And um, uh, like I said, he's working up at Blue Sky Studios. Uh, he's a great guy. Awesome lead singer for our band. He was oh, awesome. Oh, I've seen yes. the videos. Yes. Christmas party. Yes, he was great. And, and he still is. And, uh, and he makes a good old man on that old man app, too. He does. He looks very good. Uh, so check out his website. It's jyjackson2.com. Jim Jackson is on, and he says, ha, ha. <laughs> so Jim Jackson is on. Say hi to Jim Jackson. He's brilliant. But anyway, he's going to be doing a course for us very soon. Check out his website. He's done a lot of stuff for Disney Blue Sky. jyjackson2.com. It's very, very cool, and I can't wait to get him on because you guys are going to love him. One of my best friends. And uh, anyway, let's get back to what we're doing. I'm going to mention Jim again later. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jim, Jim, Jimmy, Jim. I'm getting lost in my gyms. Um, so uh, are we on the, oh, we're on the desk. So I did some sketching earlier. Matter of fact, let me turn these off. I was doing, I, I actually turned it sideways. I was wanted to come up with a good idea and I didn't want to spend you know half the uh, half the session just finding the sketch so you can see here's one uh, image rotate counterclockwise um, I wanted something where you know we had our, our soldier or our Viking warrior at, in the boat and, uh, and this was feeling kind of good but it felt a little small in the composition and I was trying some different some different ideas Here's one of the of the one that I ended up with, image rotation clockwise. So this is the first scribble I did. Sometimes you just never know. And I did this really quick scribble, this gesture, and this one really clicked for me. I really, really liked it. And so I took that and developed it, and this is what we have now. I kind of turned it into this. And I started to tie it down, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to wait for you guys. And... Uh, 
and we'll tie it down together. So that's what I'm going to do now, and uh, and then we'll start answering questions, whatever you guys want to jabber about, jibber jaw. Great glasses, someone said. Oh, hey, yes, I went out and bought new glasses. My other ones, I had all these different prescriptions, well, I, I shouldn't say prescriptions, I, I just buy my glasses at the grocery store, whatever works. And I got tired of having these little ones on my face, so I finally splurged and got some bigger ones. So, thanks. Yeah, they, they feel awesome. I love them. So here, I'm not, I'm going to, um, normally I did a little bit of research on, on Vikings. And then you folks that are watching from Denmark, you can correct me on this. Um, I know that the, norm, the normal helmet for the Vikings had a nasal guard over the nose, but I don't like how it covers his face. And so I chose to go without it. And that whole idea of Vikings having horns on their helmets and all that, that's kind of largely uh, a myth. They did. They have seen them in, in some uh, excavations and or, or, or art depictions, but general, you know, a, a Viking with horns on his helmet, generally it would be in the way. And even these iron wings that I put on here, um, they did have those, but mainly in ceremonial uh, type situations. But I really liked it, so I wanted to go away from the the typical uh, Viking horn and. Um, and do this and I like the the rivets I want to put some rivets in here this is gonna be a fun one to paint and I, I really wanted this guy to be kind of rough you know he's been around he's he's you know he, he's a commander I think he's just he's been around for years and survived he'd be probably scarred up you know he's taking a couple of hits to the head like the wings on the helmet. They're you do? Pretty, yeah. Oh, thanks. They're pretty cool. Yeah, that was from me. So, I'm trying to get a nice flow. You know, a lot of people ask me about hair, and I'm looking for shape and flow, so you can see how I'm doing that here. And I wanted this beard to kind of emphasize the snarl. So you see I have one, I have this eyebrow up over here, and this one down, and he's kind of looking off to the side. YouTube comment, it's Hawaiian Aaron Blaze. Yes, it is. I love Hawaiian shirts. Actually, I, I, I mostly wear Hawaiian shirts, but um, lately, I, you know, I, I, do most, I do a lot of my shopping at Tractor Supply. Because I love their clothes, their car Carhartt. But car we did get you that shirt in Hawaii. Yeah, we did. I I got like five of these in Hawaii, five or six. Um, Mikhail asks, um, you get a lot of the repeat, same repeat questions, show after show. Have you ever thought of doing a little edited snippet that comes on prior to your live stream answering those? Um, most asked questions. Well, there is a there is a FAQ thing that Nick I have, I don't know if Nick's done it yet or he's going to do. It. I think he did do it, but we definitely want an FAQ kind of thing. Uh, frequently asked questions. Maybe on the site it is. Maybe it is on the site. Maybe that's where it's at. I know he I know he's got one on the site, but I thought we were doing one specifically for this, but I don't know. It's a great suggestion. Yes, you're you're right. And someone's asking, what software are you using? Which is a frequently asked question. It really is. Uh, what am I using right now? Yes. I am using Photoshop. Just straight up Photoshop. On your Cintiq. Oh, yes. You want to do the, yeah, my the set, set shop? So I'm on my Cintiq. Uh, this is a, a Wacom uh, 32 Pro. So it's a 32-inch uh, Cintiq. And... Um, uh, it's awesome, and this thing—the screen is 8K, or I think, or almost 8K, or something like that. If I if I do a true, like I'm, I have my screen up above me. Uh, I don't know if you can see that on the set cam, but my screen up above me—that's a 4K screen. And when I drag images down uh, that take up the entire screen, that only takes up one quarter of my screen here. So, um, so this is an 8K screen. It's super, super. Uh, detail. It's really awesome. messed up. I must have missed a wire. That's okay. 
Don't worry about it. Okay. We don't have to go back to it. Did uh, did it come on for a minute? No. Oh, it didn't come on. Gotcha. It was, it was on right before we started, but. Oh, uh, that's all right. Sometimes that happens, but um, but it, it, anyway, I'm on a uh, a Cintiq 32 Pro. If you're looking, if you're in the market, you know, for a in, introductory kind of tablet or pen display. Well, first of all, I always recommend uh, Wacom, and I know there's a lot of people out there that you know recommend cheaper. Uh, there's some cheaper choices. I've never used anything other than Wacom, and trust me, I'm not getting paid to promote Wacom right now. I just really love the products, and um, and so. Uh, I, rec I recommend if you want to get into it they, they've got a great 16 inch uh, that I use when I go on the road and uh, when we go all over Europe and all that it's a great introductory pen display and uh, I use it a lot and think it's great so check that out and then or you can go you know get all the bells and whistles and you know get the 32 like I'm working on now um, uh, the one thing that I find kind of buggy uh, and that I don't use on the Cintiq pen displays is the touch feature. Uh, I don't find that I need it. I find it actually gets in the way more than anything else. So that's just take that piece of advice. But I really love I love the products. So here I'm just working out. I want to get a nice kind of feel to this to this guy. Manuel asks, uh, since he just started animating recently, he's starting on 12 frames per second. Is that okay, or should he go straight to 24 frames per second? Well, I think you should go to 24 frames per, per second, but either way, you're going to get a sense of timing because they're multiples of each other. When I'm animating at 24 frames per second, if I have slow enough animation, then I'll just put my drawings on twos, which becomes 12 frame per se frames per second. But what's great about working on 24 frames per second is that if you decide to go with faster action something running really quick you're going to have those extra drawings those extra frames in order to smooth out that action if you're only working at 12 frames per second you're going to have a lot of big gaps in between the drawings and it's going to strobe a lot so i would recommend going to 24 and if you want to work on twos go ahead and work on twos but then if you want something really quick you're going to have those extra frames to work with so that's why you want to stick with 24. Do you know, Keely asks, um, if you know exactly what Jim Jackson's course is going to be about, or is it... It's going to be animation related, okay. um, or uh, 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 karaoke related. Okay. okay. <laughs> he said they're going to teach you how to, um, Jim, how to sing. Uh, it's a, yep, it's a, uh, and dance. Okay. Jim's a great dancer, so uh, he's going to be teaching dance, um, dance the animation way. Yes. There's a couple people saying that the um, Vikings didn't have winged or horned helmets. It was more Celtic or Gaul. Well, they did have uh, winged helmets in ceremonial uh, uh, situations, and some of the so, and they'd wear them. They'd wear them ceremonially, and you know what? I like the look of it. I do and too. I'm the artist. This is my world, <laughs> so I'm putting it on there. Someone said, no, those are just gremlin ears. <laughs> that's right. So there's a lot of drawing in this, so that's why I wanted to get a little bit ahead before we started. Someone does want to see sketches from the last trip. Although no. your, your paintings I, no. you gave away. You can't see them. <laughs> that was one of the benefits of being on that trip. Um, everybody on the trip got a painting from me and Ronnie so we gave away all of our paintings so if you uh, that's another little thing if you know when the next time we do it um, you know if you want to join us that's you'll, you'll get some original art you know that ahead of time someone says hi Dustin no no Dustin <laughs> <laughs> it's Vedanta He'll be back, no worries. So this is kind of a leather kind of covering on his arms. And I, I had his arms hanging straight down by his side, but it really flattened out the image. 
Uh, and so I wanted to do, for, do some foreshortening. And so I chose to have him kind of reaching over and holding the, the, the side of the ship that they're, he's in. And I was trying to frame it so that you could see the, the dragon head uh, on, the, on the bow of the, of the ship, but um, it just it wasn't looking right, so I decided just to focus too on... too busy or something? It was getting too busy, and the, the actual the, the front bow on a Viking ship really goes high, so in order to frame it, um, it just didn't look right. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I got three gonna, here that I've yep. been sitting. Twitch question, are you going to put some war-themed face paint on him? Yes, I am. I love when you do that. Yeah, I'm just not sure what yet, so I've left it blank, but I am going to, and it'll probably be blue. He's going to have a big, bright red beard. I want him to have red hair. Uh, what size do you usually make your canvas? This one is 20 inches by 16 inches at 300 DPI. Usually my longest dimension, I make 20 inches. And then I can do any dimension, like if I might have something 10 by 20 or or 14 by 20, but I always make the longest dimension 20 inches uh, because that's basically, I don't need to go any bigger than that at 300 DPI. And uh, that beard is lit. <laughs> yeah, he's been working on it for a while, this guy. And then here, I want his kind of like a, a blanket cape. something, whatever. Marco's saying that Wacom launched a 22-inch Cintiq today? Uh, I don't know that they launched it, that it's today. I think it's been out. Oh, okay. They do have a 22-inch, yeah. But I, I could be wrong. I, I thought it's been out. I thought it's been out for a while. Hi, Erin. Um, this is Abigail Lowe. She says Hi. she met you. Um, you meet a million people, but she met you at the graduation at Pennsylvania College of Art and Design. Oh, yeah. You I went, remember that. Um, that was a few years ago. She went to lunch with you and John DeVenti. Yeah. It yeah. was a big life highlight for her. I just wanted to say I'm coming to Lightbuck Expo this fall and can't wait to see you again. Oh, that's great. I can't wait to see you. Awesome. Yep, I remember you well. So here, I'm just kind of getting some of those knuckles in there, a little knucklehead. Uh, YouTube question, can you explain how to do skin texture? Um, well, like any texture, you really want to see what are the, what are the values and the, the changes in value that make up that texture. And you know what's the what's the topography that makes up that texture? Those are the things that I look at. Um, you can also photo bash skin texture if you want to do that. But um, and, and when you're talking about skin texture, you're talking about human skin, lizard skin, elephant skin. There's all kinds of skin textures. So you really want to look at. Um, it's not just texture. Also, it's also local color. Look at the local color that makes up um, whatever it is that you're trying to create and. Uh, that will help. I'm assuming you're talking about uh, human skin texture because that's what we're working on right now. Uh, Mostafa on YouTube says, Hi, Vedanta. Hey. Hi. Uh, you ought to make more voiceover like you did for the bunny. I loved it, and it's one of my favorite videos. Oh, the bunny was me. That's right. And they want you to do more of that. Sometimes it tears you apart. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, have you heard there's going to be a Thor 4 movie? Uh, no, I haven't, but I'm not surprised. <laughs> I, would, I would assume they're there so would be. They're so funny. It's, it's, yeah. They're good visually. I kind of like I like the direction they, they've taken with Thor, kind of with the comic route. Nick says they did launch a new 22 entry-level model today. Oh, so it's the entry-level. So that's even cooler. So uh, I, I go back on what I said. So the um, I was talking about the 16... Well, they've come out with the 22 now, and it's and it's the entry level. So um, I would recommend if you guys are looking to get in to a pen display, like I was talking about earlier, check out that new 22 because that I think it's uh, I think it'll be awesome. Matter of fact, we should Nick, we should look into that ourselves. Well, I guess the 16 is good. 
I'm a for travel. I'm a Wacom junkie. Yeah, I always get. I I try to get the every new Wacom when it comes out. You know, it's uh, we can write them off. <laughs> it's our business. Julio says he is so glad that your dad got to be a part of uh, the trip and fulfill a lifelong dream. Oh um, yeah. He also said that he's watched the owl video we did on Tuesday. He did. Oh yeah. A couple times and he can't figure out how you did the rays of light over the owl's wings. And he was wondering if you did it on a separate layer. No, I just I I put a I put a, an entire layer set to multiply that's kind of a bluish color and it pushed all the values dark. And then those rays of light over the owl's wing, I just erased it away. That's all I did. Yep, I just erased it away. Do you have experience drawing dragons or any other kind of mythical creatures? Uh, dragons? I mean, I've, I've drawn my own version of dragons. And you've done all kinds of mythical wood creatures and mermaids. And oh, yeah. I mean, I make up my own stuff. I kind of uh, non-traditional. I'm trying to make this spear a little bit unperfect. So this is kind of fun. I'm, I'm like I'm digging this guy. The folds here are getting a little bit even. I don't want them to be so even. There we go. That feels better. And then uh, I'm going to go in the back. Well, I'll do this. If you press R, you can rotate the canvas like so. In case you didn't know that, I did not know that. Yeah, R is the uh, short is a is the shortcut for rotating your canvas. Joe McClendon would like to know. Um, well, he says, would you say studios are always hiring? And if so, how would you go about applying to them? Is it usually their website or something? Yes, it's usually their website. And no, studios are not always hiring. So you want to, and, and, and when they do hire, they're usually hire for, hiring for something specific. So, yeah, go to their website, see what they're looking for. Have you ever heard of a Kittleson troll? A what? It's spelled K-I-T-T-E-L-S-E-N, Kittleson. No. Have you? No. Twitch question. Has Aaron ever used a non-screen drawing tablet? And how much of a difference does it make for drawing on a non-screen versus screen tablet? Yes, I, I was using just a regular uh, tablet, non-screen, I guess you want to call it, tablet when I first started. And... Uh, it's just to me it's just not intuitive I'm looking you know I'm looking at a screen over here and drawing you know over here and it just or down here and it just I just didn't enjoy it so I as soon as I was able to get a Cintiq which I was able to do at Disney they, they got one for me um, I I went with that um, Manny says we'll give you a hundred bucks for that skull in the background behind you <laughs> Not everything's a hundred bucks, Manny. <laughs> That's an inside joke. Manny and I, Manny Carrasco, who's uh, who's just commenting there, who's also an amazing artist and and uh, started the uh, wonderful uh, group that we're a part of called Expedition Art. Uh, we were out in uh, uh, Wyoming was it last summer and uh, or last spring or whatever, and. Um, we stopped in at a, uh, a taxidermy shop to see what they had for skulls, which is where I actually got this cougar skull from. It was on that stop with Manny. I got this cougar skull. But uh, they had a lot of different mounts and, and skulls, and uh, everything was 100 bucks. It didn't matter what you asked about. It was 100 bucks, And so that's why he's going to give me 100 bucks for that. Beautiful. Uh, 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 giraffe. Uh, giraffe, thank you. I almost said zebra. Uh, question, YouTube question. I always tend to screw up on the line work for my digital art. How do you improve yours over time? I just draw a lot. Yeah, the, you know, I, I get a lot of questions about how do you improve on this and how do you improve on that in relation to doing whatever in art. The only answer I can give you is time. Time has a way of making everything better. And the more you do it, the better you get. 
You know, if you want to be a pro football player, you play a lot of football. If you want to be a pro golfer, you play a lot of golf. Well, if you want your art to be great, you want to be a pro artist, you got to do a lot of art. And that's what happens over time, and you just get better. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. It's only art. You know, if you're not making mistakes, you're not learning. And so I've made a lot of mistakes. I've done a lot of crappy art, and I've learned from it. So take that with a grain of salt. Take that, put that in your pipe and smoke it. I'm trying to think. What I, what I see is... Maybe I can see his thumb. Gabby wants to know if you order your skulls and bones online. I do. Bone clones. Okay. She's also saying the bone room in Paxton Gate are great bone animal... Um, well, see, I don't like to buy real bones because I don't want to provide a demand for real animals being killed. Um, if, and then the real skulls that I do have come from animals that have died naturally. Um, so, uh, other than the giraffes, the giraffe skull, which was hunted, and normally I wouldn't do that, but I didn't want it to go to waste, and so um, I bought it. I got it at a taxidermy shop in Texas, and, uh, and I've used it for education, and so I didn't want its, its death to go in vain. Um, but I, everything else I have, mainly my big skulls here, uh, are, are reproductions. But they're beautiful, beautiful reproductions. Uh, so anyway, I've got a wolf pelt over, over there that was uh, from a wolf that died of natural causes. And like I said, a lot of you know, stuff like that that I, uh, I, I try, to, try to be as careful as I can when I'm getting real stuff. <clears throat> All right, so we've got the drawing in. That feels pretty good. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Looks great. Have you ever made a comic, or do you have a favorite comic? I don't. No, I, I, I really didn't. I never was really... I, I kind of was into comics when I was a kid. Not that much. Um, I was really into animals. Um, I would get comic books, uh, and I, but I never read them. It was more about uh, looking at the drawings and, the, and the, you know, the anatomy and things like that. I was, when I was a kid, I was, uh, Bern Hogarth was my favorite anatomy guy. He did the dynamic anatomy books. And so I had those and I had, and I was a huge Frank Frazetta fan. And so anything Frank Frazetta, I would copy. And that was kind of, that was my whole childhood, you know, and then animals. All right. So I'm going to start doing local color. Local color is the color of an object when it's not lit and it's not in shadow. It's just the color of an object. I want to get that beard. I want to get in there and get that first. So have, and I know you, the answer to this, have you seen the new Lion King? And I thought it came out earlier this week, but it doesn't come out until tomorrow for, for us. Right. And right. so, no, I haven't seen it yet. Um, matter of fact, why don't we go see it tonight? Is it, oh, it will do a preview tonight, right? Yeah. Oh, sweet. You want to go see it tonight? Yeah, let's go see it tonight. All right, we're going to see it tonight. Tonight, tonight. We're doing it tonight. Yes. Can't wait. So I'm going down this beard here. And don't worry. I'm just going to color it in really quick. This is going to be kind of the, the focal point of this image, I think, is going to be his red beard. Do you know who Mr... Mm, Manchess is or yes. the Timberline books? Yes, man. Someone suggesting that you do a contact him and do a collaboration. On yeah, he and I have come so close to meeting. We uh, he was at CTN last year, and I wanted to buy one of his paintings, and uh, but it, it was first of all, it wasn't for sale. I couldn't talk. Whoever it was is his representative. I wanted to talk them into it. Uh, we both know of each other, but we've never. He, I think, he just recently found out about me because I'm doing the, the snow bear project but um, I'm such a huge fan of his work they just said that would be so incredible it would be a match made in art heaven yeah I think he I, I just love I love 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 his work I don't know if that's too bright or not but I'm gonna uh, no, I'm gonna go like with a leathery kind of twine that's what it would naturally be tying off his beard I'm paraphrasing this question, but what do you think the biggest mistake young artists make? The biggest mistake young artists make is, uh, I think, is their patience, especially nowadays. Being impatient, wanting wanting to be great now, wanting to have that 
big position now in whatever studio that they wanted to work in um, and just forgetting that it, it's, it's something that's going to take time. Um, I think that's the biggest issue. And I would say, you know, you gotta, you just gotta be patient and, and know that it's going to happen over time. Steve Young wants to know how you would make battle damaged leather textures look realistic. Um, it's like anything else. I mean, it's, it's leather itself has a specific texture to it, whether, you know, some leather you can still see where the hair follicles were attached on whatever type of animal that it came from. Um, so you want to, you know, there's that to think about. And then, you you know, it frays. So you want to think about how that fraying is going to happen. And uh, you know, there's a lot of different things to think about. And, um, and uh, when you damage it, like, well, let's say it's, it's got, it's been cut up by a sword or something like that. It's going to have peaks and valleys and the damage and shadow and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, don't forget about all that kind of stuff. Do you still work on Corel Painters? They said they saw a demo you've done. Yeah. I, I don't use it very often, but I do use it. Yeah. And Alexa Irene, who was on our stream on Tuesday, I recognize her. She wants to know what your first piece of art that you created that kind of gave you the passion for knowing that you wanted to pursue art. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember not, not, I don't have any memory of not wanting to be uh, an artist. I've always wanted to be uh, someone that does what I'm doing. And so I, it's, uh, it's been, in, it's part of my DNA. And so to think of a time when I didn't, I don't know. I can't, it doesn't, it doesn't compute. I've always, always, was always going to be an artist. Um, and even if I, I've done so many, I can't remember that far back <laughs> as far as what, what specific piece of art may have turned me one way or the other. Um, I do know that wildlife art, animal art really got me started in wanting, you know, wanting to keep doing it. I, I, I've always drawn, but it was when I discovered animal art at a very young age, probably around five or six years old, when I realized this is what I want to do forever. It was based on, on that. Uh, great on you, YouTube says, I'm new here. Found you because you're trending on YouTube. Nice work. Oh, I didn't know I was trending. That's cool. Maybe the Anala Yangala Oh, I did. Animation. Oh, yeah. If you guys are interested, I did a, um, my friend Tim Hodge sent me, well, let me back up. Back 27 years ago, when, uh, when I was working on The Lion King, the original Lion King, uh, I was cast to do uh, the role to animate young Nala. Uh, you know, Nick, uh, Mark Hen was cast to animate Simba, and I was a young animator ready for, you know, kind of a small, decent role, which was young Nala, and, uh, and I did a lot of work next to um, Mark Hen on some of the other projects. Um, on Aladdin, uh, right before that, you know, he did Jasmine, and I did Raja. I was kind of, you know, I did a lot of animals back then, and so going into The Lion King, I was given the task to create, uh, visually create young Nala, and so I did, and um, and when I finished up the design, uh, I. Um, I wanted to do a quick, very quick animation test. Actually, I don't even think the design was finished quite yet. I, I hit a point in the design where I was ready to try moving it around. And so I did this little animation test. And one of the cool things, looking back on it, was that Nala, I really got a lot of inspiration from my daughter, who was only about four at the time, four years old, and uh, or three, actually. She was born in 89, and I think I was working on it in 92. So. Um, so I was really getting a lot of inspiration from her, and I basically designed Nala after after her, and um, uh, so I did this shot, and then I handed it off to my friend uh, Tracy Lee, who was my assistant, cleanup assistant, and uh, he took it and cleaned up the drawings. 
and uh, the rough drawings that I had given him, he kind of put off to the side. And my other uh, friend, Tim Hodge, who you guys might know from our, uh, he just put out a new uh, course on our website on how to draw cartoon animals. Well, Tim Hodge, way back then, he, he grabbed those, those rough drawings of mine and he kept them. You know, a little bastard. <laughs> but I'm glad he did because he kept them for the last 27 years. And then he just recently, my daughter is turning 30 this year, and he sent that little scene that I animated to my daughter for her birthday. And so we created a little YouTube video because I shot the drawings and talked about it. And it was really cool. It was very, very cool. So is James Young Jackson the second Jim Jackson? That's right. So someone's saying that they're surprised to know that he um, worked on EA Sports games. Oh, yeah. He was actually, uh, Jim is actually a great athlete as well. Uh, I think he played in the Super Bowl. <laughs> he may have played in the Super Bowl. 39? Yeah. but uh, <laughs> Super Bowl 100? Yeah. But anyway, uh, you know, he's a great athlete. And so he went over to EA. And um, I know he worked on a lot of the Madden stuff. And I think he was perfect for it because he's, he's so familiar with that kind of stuff. Whereas I would go into work and try to join in on the sports conversations and just make a fool of myself. I guess these trolls from Norway are really po famous and popular. I've, I've never heard of them. Trolls? Yeah, they're like little troll figurines or something. Okay. So everyone keeps talking about the trolls. I guess it's relating to like your Viking and oh, they want oh, you oh. to draw trolls. Oh man, I would love to draw trolls. I did. A, I designed some trolls for uh, King of the Elves when I was working on that film. And uh, the film never got made, but man, I really enjoyed doing that. Uh, YouTube question, is starting learning to draw by copying other artists uh, okay or not? Yeah, I mean, when I was in college, we copied old masters all the time. Yeah, whatever is going to help you see things differently. You know, I think it's a great idea. Uh, YouTube question, how do I start learning to draw? I got my first digital drawing tablet, but I have no idea how to start as I haven't drawn before. Do you have any recommended resources or advice? <laughs> well, first of all, get off the tablet. The tablet's great, but get off the tablet, grab some paper, grab a sketch pad, grab a pencil or pen, go outside and start drawing from life. That's my big recommendation. You, you do have and you can drawing do stuff. courses, right? Yeah, and I'm, yeah we're, well, we're going to have more drawing courses um, coming up soon, but... Uh, um, really specifically though I want you to go out and draw from life I think that's that's one of the best things you can do and um, and just draw 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 don't worry about mistakes but draw look look at the world around you that's where you learn you're gonna learn how light falls on form you're gonna see how form has rhythm you're gonna see you know, all kinds of stuff you know, and the reason why I tell people to draw from life is because a lot of times when you're drawing something made up, you're drawing the idea of something rather than what it really is. That's why when a little kid, if you ask a five-year-old to draw a tree, they're going to draw two bent lines with a big afro on top, you know, nine times out of ten. And because that's the idea of a, to a, a five-year-old, that's the idea of what a tree is. But then if you sit them in front of a tree and you ask them to draw it, then all of a sudden you're gonna, uh, they're gonna. You might get a crappy drawing, but you're gonna get something that's based on observation. Nick sent you a troll. Uh, I know. I saw. <laughs> that's funny. So yeah, get out there and observe. Build up your visual library. That's what I always call it. The more you draw from life, the more you build up your visual library, and it's a really good thing to do. It'll help you as an artist. Elaine Trust me. Says, would you recommend that you study something if you want to get into the movie concept art industry? Study something. Like any, like w should you study anything in particular, or is no studying required? Well, of course, you want you need to learn whatever it is that you're trying to go in for. For concept art. Yeah, I mean, especially I mean, if, if you when you go in for concept art, you need to, you know concept art isn't just oh I'm just going to make something up today. You know, it, first of all, you're going to specialize in something in concept art. And so uh, 
whatever that might be. It might be props. It might be architecture. It might be character. It might be, and uh, you know, nature, na natural, environmental. You know, any of those things. And those, yeah, you need to know what what it is that you're drawing. So yes. Short short answer. Yes. So there's that question up there. Do you think artists? Are uh, do you think young artists are afraid to make mistakes because we take art too seriously? I think young artists are afraid to make mistakes because they, they, they think the, the art's too precious. You know, over, over time, you're going to realize as you do thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces of art, it's just that. Don't worry about it. You know, you, you've, you've got 10 million more right here or right here. So, yeah, don't, don't worry about it. Yeah, I paraphrased that one earlier, but I didn't do it right. Yeah. He, he kept asking it. Nick says that's what a typical Norway troll looks like. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Hmm. YouTube question. I'm currently an animation student. And I'm putting in the time to get better. I have reached a point where I'm putting so much t uh, time into art, I sometimes get burnt out. Any advice preventing burnout? Get away from the desk every once in a while. You know, just get away from it. It's okay. You don't have to be doing it all the time. I don't draw every day. But I don't get burnt out though either. So, you know, make sure that it's something you really want to do. Um, that's my other piece of advice. Because I get a lot of people asking me, you know, how do, how do you deal with motivation and things like that? Well, I don't have issues with motivation. I love what I do. And so, um, you know, it's, if, you're, if you're having to get motivated to do your art, then you might want to think about doing something else. But as far as burnout goes, yeah, you can get burned out by doing it too much. And, um, and there's a lot of symptoms that, that manifest themselves when you're getting burned out. You'll get a lot of f physical uh, things happen. You can get carpal tunnel. You can get you know, some bad back issues. You can get a lot of different things that happen. Dustin just joined. He said he's just waking up. Hey, Dustin, what time is it there? <laughs> oh, wow. I think you, oh, that's right. They went karaoke last night. They went out and karaoke. A couple of people are suggesting you do the beard like yours, gray or salt and pepper. I'm gonna add some. Jewelry. I'm gonna add some salt and pepper, and uh, the jewelry I'll put a little bit in there. But I didn't want him to have too much jewelry because it doesn't make sense to have jewelry on going into battle. YouTube question: I am drawing somebody at that at this moment, and I keep messing up on the smile. Keeps ending up looking unnatural and creepy. Uh, advice? Well, um, a lot of times that unnatural and creepy look comes from getting the these two dark and heavy, you know, the, the smile lines. Um, maybe look at that. That might, um, other than that, I can't, without looking at it, um, I gotta, you know, I, I have a hard time knowing what specifically is wrong, what might be wrong with your drawing. Uh, but smiles can get funny because if you do them too much they do get they get like almost like a clown and get creepy looking so you don't need much to get a smile so when you were animating at disney did the animators normally do the character design as well or was that a separate job no we normally did our character designs as well um the character designs were done by supervising animators and so we we did that and um Tim Hodge joined. Tim Hodge, the great Tim Hodge. So Tim Hodge is the guy that I was talking about earlier that had those drawings over the last 26, 27 years and uh, just sent them to my daughter. And he's also the guy that if you want to go to our website and learn how to draw cartoon animals, because Tim is so excellent at it, then uh, check it out at creatureartteacher.com. See, you like how I did that plug? Oh, oops. What's that? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm All just right, learning so, my job. So let's see. I want to see here. So someone's asking, why don't you use translucent colors instead of solid colors for your um, local color? Uh, because that, I don't want anything coming through on that. I, for me personally, I just like having that nice and solid look. And then, then I build up translucent color over the top of that. They said, is it, Mia says, is it on purpose that he has your nose? Uh, probably, no, it's not on purpose, but I'm sure it, it, it sneaks its way in there. 
And oh. Dustin wants to know if it's request day, or is this just Viking that you decided to do? Uh, it's a Viking that I decided to do because people have been saying that I don't do humans very often. And so I wanted to show that I can do some, we can do some humans. I kind of like that. I don't like, I don't like the streaks on the left side. Let's see, I'm going to fix that. Kind of like that, uh, or on the right side. I kind of like the uh, the gray streak on the on the front, the way it is. What do you think of that? Oh yeah, I like that. That looks nice. Dapper. Dapper. So this is a kind of a sculpt question, a sculpting question, kind of. It says, you know, in the pygmy hippo enclosure in London Zoo, they have artwork of pygmy hippotamus silhouettes made out of their dung. Would you ever experiment with? Sculpting animal silhouettes out of their dung. Um, I'm I'm open to anything. I, to be honest with you, I have uh, paper uh, made out of elephant dung that I've done elephant drawings on, so it's not much different. So yeah, yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, YouTube question: Can you give us some tips about how to deal with clients as a freelance animator? Mm. You know, I didn't do a lot of freelance animation. Uh, the one thing I will tell you is make sure you get paid up front, do a contract, and don't take any less than what you're worth and don't work for free. Don't ever work for free. Don't ever work for a payment of recognition where they say, oh, you're going to be really recognized by this. I'm going to promote you. Don't ever do that. Don't underestimate yourself um, because all you're doing is hurting yourself and anybody else that comes along. Um, so make sure you don't do that. Uh, just really stand up for yourself. That's all I can tell you. Uh, don't let them take advantage of you and, and, and have a strong backbone. And if they don't, if they don't like your, your, um, your demands basically on whatever job that you're doing, then have the ability to walk away. And, uh, it's that important. I, it's, I, I think it's a big deal, you know, to, if you undercut yourself then you're, you're going to be stuck for all, forever. Um, you know, you, you'll just always, it'll always be. I'm just seeing guys that constantly undercut themselves and are constantly struggling. And uh, and you don't want that, obviously. So this is the sale in the background. Uh, have you ever read Andrew Loomis's book books or uh, Glenn Vilpu book on drawing? Do you like their techniques? Uh, I've never read Andrew Loomis. I actually know uh, Glenn Vilpu very well. Uh, we're very good friends. And I love, I, I know of uh, Andrew Loomis. I've just never read his books. I love both of them. Yeah, I think they're great. Glenn and I have painted together here in Florida. Um, Brooke from Idaho said she's going to be in Florida on the days you're doing your workshop. Although she's a single mom and money's tight, she was wondering if you have any other options for viewing that or meet and greet something else. Besides. We don't have any other options currently on viewing that. We are talking about doing a streaming option uh, on future events. So that's something that uh, we definitely are looking into. I'm going to go darker on that. It may be cooler like it's steel. And if you're a student or teacher, you can get a discount as well. Yes. If you're a student or uh, I don't like that. If you're a student or a teacher, you can get a discount. But we are going to be looking into doing a streaming option in the future. Um, and if you know you want to meet, if they want to meet you, you it's you're going to kind of have to come to the live the live events. Yes. Are there a bucket list of stories you'd like to animate? Uh, I wouldn't say there's a bucket list of stories, although there's a lot of... There, I do have stories in my head that I've I've wanted to tell. I've got movies that I've developed that I want to tell. You know, art story for those of you out there that have followed me know that this is something I've been trying to get off the ground for a long time. 
um, art story. There's you know, King of the Elves. There's the Legend of Tembo. All of these are films that I really want to I, I want to get done, get made. And uh, uh, so I've got yes, I I do have quite a quite a handful. King of the Elves. King of the Elves. Yep. It's my favorite movie that never was. Exactly. Um, McKelly is saying, um, I rewatched the original Lion King paying attention to the animation details is so amazing. How do you create a camera effect in 2D? Is it moving the camera, um, in on the image, etc., or do you have to constantly redraw the image to enlarge it? Oh, no, it's just moving, it, the camera is just trucking in on the image, frame by frame. It's very simple. Very simple, simple, simple. All right, I'm gonna do um, the background now. So we're getting we're getting our local color in there, and I'm gonna get his paint in soon. Um, I want to go. Will you do videos with Glenn Vilpu again? Yes, probably at some point. I can't say yes for sure, but I'm hoping. I'm hoping yes. Someone just went to his. Um, his course, drawing course at the Art History Museum in Vienna, Austria, Martin. Yeah. Said it was great. Yeah, that's that's one of the things I love about Glenn is um, all the stuff he does. Um, around the world, he's amazing. Jeffrey says he's currently drawing a cartoon pelican in a chef outfit for a seafood restaurant logo <laughs> while he's watching this. Uh, awesome. You're inspiring him. <laughs> kind of want to get maybe a little violet in the sky, like it's early morning. Oh yeah, that sounds, that sounds good. Have you ever drawn aliens? Yeah, I've made up my own aliens. Jim Jackson has, because Jim Jackson did the Councilwoman for Lilo and Stitch. If you go to his website, JY Jackson Two, you can see all his design drawings. Yeah, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go with that. Jim Jackson. Someone suggesting waves crashing on the boat. Yeah. Well, I'm. Uh, I don't want to. I'm gonna get some spray. I'm definitely gonna do that. I don't want to get it too, too busy because my lighting now. I'm gonna get some uh, some fun. Uh, I think I'm gonna get some fun uh, kind of lighting happening. Let's do that now. I'm going to jump to a new layer on top of everything, set it to multiply, and now I'm going to start with my lighting. Stephen Marshall asks for the Orlando seminar. We, will you, they be able to draw along with you and bring a tablet or paper? Yes, you can do that. You're, you're going to be sitting in um, like chairs, like theater, seats. like theater seats. Yeah, so it's good. You know, don't, don't bring something huge. It's not going to be desks. Like a laptop or a... Yeah, you can bring a... Yeah. Tablet. If you brought a, a, a iPad Pro or something like that, that would be perfect. Don Higgins is asking, have you ever considered teaching at a master class week-long type of environment? Yes. How's that for an answer? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I um. We just did the England, and it wasn't a week, but it was. It was three, almost. It was four. Weeks. It was four days. Yeah. Four magical days. Yeah, and um. Uh, sorry, I'm kind of getting. Thinking about something. I'm thinking. But yeah, no, we're gonna we're gonna be doing that quite a bit. Um, we're trying to take our business in that direction, doing more, uh, personal, uh, one on one kind of stuff. Well, not one on one, but you know, me working live with students, and uh, so we've got a few things that we're working on currently to to make make that happen. Who did the character designs for Brother Bear? I know it just wasn't one person. Was uh, well, a lot of the animators did uh, different things. Um, one of our main character designers that came on early, uh, who's since passed away, who was a, an amazing artist, was a guy named Harold Sieperman. A German character designer that I just he, first of all he was a wonderful guy and uh, just an amazing artist 
and uh, he did a lot of the work for uh, Tarzan as well. Initial work there. So here I'm just creating the shadow of his hand. Yana says she uses your uh, Aaron Blaze lighting, she calls it, um, that you do in your... She do, uses that in her drawings all the time now. <laughs> my, my big shadows? For me, I think it's scary because you're covering up your entire drawing, but then the end result is so, like, amazing. Yeah. You know, you, it puts focus. Yeah, don't be afraid to just go for it. Actually, I hope I didn't miss any questions up there. Sorry, Nick, I just saw something change out of the corner of my eye. YouTube question. I really enjoyed the perspective tutorial video you did a few weeks back. I was wondering if there'd be a part two for it. Actually, now that you mentioned that, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm actually doing a, uh, my next uh, course. It w I was going to do a Birds of Prey course, which I'm still going to be doing, but my next course is going to be on um, perspective. One, two, and three point perspective. Doing perspective to scale, projection, Everything that I know about perspective, I'm going to be putting into this course. Organic perspective, you know, characters and all that kind of stuff. Angela Martinez wants to know how you animate stilted dialogue and make it work. Or is, is there a difference between um, that opposed to good voice acting? I'm not sure I know what you mean by stilted dialogue. Sorry, I don't know what that means. Like muted or maybe, yeah, I don't, I don't know either. I, I, that's why I hesitated to ask that one. If you could rephrase, Angela. You know, you always want great acting. You don't, you don't want dialogue that sucks, <laughs> for lack of a better way of putting it. Um, you always want good, strong dialogue. You know, the dialogue is what you base your, you know, your acting on. So right now I'm looking at all the, the light is coming from the upper right. So I'm looking at how that's going to cast shadows. And I'm going to have some reflected light coming off the back as well. Uh, YouTube question. Aaron, were you able to see the Salvador Dali Disney showcase when that was still in the museum? Do you like Dali? Yes, I like Dali. I've actually seen the Dali uh, pieces that he did when he was working with Disney. I've seen those in person in our own vaults at Disney. So I had a pretty good uh, I had a pretty good uh, pretty good access. We all did, which was really cool back then. Tim Hodge adds, by the way, not an art related thing, Vikings are credited with inventing mead, honey wine. It's quite yummy. <laughs> I made some myself and plan to make more when I harvest my honey this month. Oh. Send some our way. <laughs> I want mead. Or we'll just come up I think to you. Does, uh, wasn't Nick drinking mead yesterday? He was, and look, he just sent you a picture of, is that what he's drinking now? Icelandic Arctic Pale Ale. Einstock. Way to get through the work day, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> can you draw horses sometime soon I watched your pre preview for the class and I love how you do them sure you can also get the class at creatureartteacher.com <laughs> hey Achilles stop it bud Aww. so Angela's rephrasing and she's saying um, when a voice actor says the line stiffly with no good inflections to work off of what do you do you have them re-record it. Yeah, so if that's what you're talking about. Yeah, I just don't, you know, whenever I'm recording actors, uh, when I'm working on a movie, I make sure, first of all, that I get the performance I'm looking for. And a lot of times, I when we do takes, we have the, anim the, the actors record the dialogue or record the line three times in a row, and that's one take. And then we have them do it again. Now, if it's a long piece of dialogue, we'll just do one take on it um, or one recording per take. But a lot of times, it's... You know it's short and so we'll have them do it in different ways um, I I'm always very specific I don't like to I don't like to be non-specific for actors I want to give them enough room to um, make it their own but I also want to 
make be clear in my directing with them and so I'm always very careful about how I um, approach a, a, a scene with them I try to be very specific in what I'm looking for in a performance and then I let them perform it uh, and uh, Nick says in honor of today's stream I am drinking Icelandic beer there you go nice Aaron do you have a favorite voice actor Gabby wants to know a favorite voice actor. Um, well, one of my favorite voices, and he's an actor that, I mean, I don't know if he's, I guess he's done some voice acting, is... Uh, Let me guess. Bill Nye. Oh, I thought you were going to say... Uh, no, what's that? I'm Morgan Freeman. <laughs> well, of course, Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. But Bill Nye, not Bill Nye the science guy. Bill, but Nighy, Bill yeah. Yeah, Nighy or whatever, the, the British actor. Um... Man, I love his voice. Because he was Davy Jones, wasn't he? Yeah, he was Davy Jones. In the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. He's one of he's probably one of my favorites at this he's point. He's awesome. What about your just favorite actor in general? Him probably. Yeah, he's he's definitely up there. I I I'd watch anything. Try Jeff Bridges is probably one of my favorites. Gary Oldman. Yeah, I know you love Gary, Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman's my favorite. Yeah, uh, Jeff Bridges is one of those guys that I will watch anything because he's in it. You know, he's that that kind of thing. Uh, YouTube. Hi, Aaron. Since you used to work on a 32-inch screen, do you feel that a 16-inch screen is too small for working all that all day long? I'm a student. I'm studying concept art. No, as a matter of fact, I use a 16-inch when I'm on the road, and I'll and I use it for you know all day lectures, and I, I you get used to it. You just do, and uh, I think it's fine. Since you used to work on the 32-inch screen, do you feel um, that a 16-inch... That's inch the one I just asked. Oh. That's the one I just answered. Are they asking it probably on YouTube and on Facebook? I mean, probably, you yeah. You silly billies. Uh, YouTube question. Will you make more videos of drawing animals from life? I find those really helpful. Yes, I will. Sure. Can you start an art career at any age without art school, etc.? I think you can. Yeah, why not? Now, whether or not people are going to buy your art is a different story, but you can you can try to do it. You know, I think art school helps because you're going to get exposed to different ways of seeing the world and expressing yourself, and different you know types of art movements and things like that that have happened that I think are important to learn about because it, it really helps you kind of see the world differently. So I'm really trying to find my light patterns right now, my light and dark patterns. Is your shadow in multiply? The question. Yes, my shadow is in multiply. Julio says, "Hi, Vedanta. Nice job as Karen's co-pilot." As Karen, Aaron's. Co -pilot. Aaron's co-pilot. Um, he said, "Did you go to England? If so, do you critique each other's work?" We do. I think we do. You you give me advice a lot, which I appreciate. Well, I always show you what I'm working on. And go. What do you think? And yeah, so, you do. You do that. And you should tell me. I hope you tell me honestly. I do. I, I'm honest. I'm not gonna blow smoke up something. My ass. Right. There. So I'm getting. A, I'm starting to get a little thing here that I'm liking. I'm getting a nice light pattern. Someone's asking why didn't you cast the pole shadow over the face? Would that ruin the composition? Yeah, that's why I didn't. I didn't want to. I didn't want to draw away from the face. Let's see. So Gabby said she met Gary Oldman at David Bowie's tribute concert. I hate you. <laughs> Just kidding. How's that Gabby. look? Oh, actually, that that doesn't look bad. What do you think? No, I like it. I don't think it takes away from. Is that Gabby that suggested that? Um, you said? no. Here, uh, Melanie Richard. Hey, Melanie, that's an awesome suggestion. I like it. Yeah, so it's not covering up the eye. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's kind of cool. Gives it a nice uh, <clears throat> sense of light. 
Hey, Aaron, do you usually animate your acting scenes based on the subtext? Yeah, I mean, it depends on how heavy the subtext is. But yeah, I'm, always, I'm thinking about everything that's in the shot. And I'm also thinking about the shots before, the shots after, what kind of character I'm animating. You know, sometimes characters, they wear their, their hearts and their words on their sleeves and they're not full of subtext. You know, sometimes they're not a very bright character. You know, characters that have a lot of subtext are usually characters that are a little bit smarter. And uh, sometimes your character just isn't sophisticated. <laughs> so that it really depends. Someone suggesting a dent in the helmet? Yes, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna have dents in the helmet. Um, and did you know that Bill Nye was in the Detective Pikachu? Did you see it? Did you like it? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I wasn't, I didn't know. I didn't like that movie. I'm not, a, I'm not into that stuff. Dustin loves Pokemon. Yeah. It was his era, though. Yeah. I mean, late 90s, right? Yeah. I don't, to be honest with you, I don't get Pokemon. <laughs> but I'm an old guy, so what do I know? That was after my time, too. I like Darkwing Duck. Have yeah. Have you seen that? Darkwing Duck. I do remember Early Darkwing 90s? Duck. Yeah. DuckTales was still on reruns. See, that's when you were a kid and I was that's an when adult. when I was a kid. <laughs> Gargoyles. Good animated shows. This is I'm I'm kind of digging this. This is fun. The the uh, the um, the color range on this I'm digging. So I got to get that shadow. I'm going to do it on another la 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 layer. I don't know why I'm doing it on another layer, but I'm going to do it on another layer. I'm going to put it way back here. Manuel wants, wants to know how you can be subtle in animation without being boring um, in order to handle simple acting. Well, see, I think Manuel's confusing. Uh, you're not being boring if you're being truthful. And so your, your animation doesn't always have to move around a lot in order to be exciting and engaging. So as long as you're being truthful in your animation, you're not being boring. And so when I mean truthful, I mean, you know, be honest in the way that character would act. And then you're going to have air, uh, animation that's really engaging and... Uh, um, Hold on, let me get this. Because that shadow comes right down through the middle of his helmet. Caroline. Hold from, on, I'm not done with oh, the other sorry. question. That's okay. But um, you just be really honest with, with, your, uh, with your approach to your animation. And no matter how subtly you play it or how broad you play it, if you're honest, it'll never be boring. And it'll always feel um, real because you're being honest in, in your approach to the, the acting. And, um, and that, that's really what we're going for. We, we want our audience to forget that they're looking at drawings and to really engage with our characters. We want them to feel the emotion. We want them to, to laugh, to cry, to you know, go through all the, all the emotions that you know, are, are present in you know, whatever film you're, you're working on. That's really what you want at the end of the day. Like in Bear in the Hair, when the bear sees the tree, and yeah. his eyes just barely open. He, all he does is open up his um, eyes, like, yeah. a, like a line width. But it make, it's so impactful. Yeah, exactly. That's a, that's a perfect example. Uh, were you always inspired by Mark Ken to be an animator like him? And what was it like being friends with him and work on the same movies with him? I was really inspired by Mark Ken. I was inspired by Glenn Keane. I was inspired by all the guys that I worked with at the studio. Um, Mark was great. Mark was one of the things that really inspired me with Mark is his uh, how prolific he was, how fast he was, and so I really took a lot of uh, um, I took a lesson from him basically in just stick stay at your desk. I mean that was the biggest way he did it. He never got up from his desk. And whereas a lot of guys were off playing, you know, doing rubber band wars and things like that, including myself, I was caught up in that sometimes. Um, you know, he was sitting there, you know, animating away. 
And so, you know, we would take our breaks and goof around, but he, he didn't really take breaks that much. And, uh, and he became, you know, one of the most prolific animators in the studio ever. And uh, so it's, uh, that's, that was pretty cool. Don Higgins wants to know why you put a backhand cover on one hand and not the other. I forgot it on the other hand. <laughs> I'm glad you saw, you noticed that because I forgot it on I the other I didn't know if one. it was like a wrist guard for like yeah. shooting arrows or... Uh, no, I just... Um, there we go. I, uh, I just forgot to draw it on the other hand. So I'm going to do that right now because I meant to go back and I just didn't do it. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Don. Oops. You get in here and get some of these beard hairs first. Rick Hunter says, I know it's a serious drawing, but I keep imagining this guy thinking, if it takes five more minutes to get to the store, I'm killing someone. <laughs> Do you find kids' cartoons these days too simple? Uh, well, I mean, I think that I understand why they're doing it. It's all within budget. Um, I, if, if someone has the ability to do something more sophisticated, yeah, I want to see some more sophisticated approach to, to cartoons, definitely. Uh, but, I mean, it's, you know, I'm, I'll be the first one to tell you I love Rick and Morty. And I think sometimes it's more about the story or the, the uh, theme of the show rather than the animation. Yeah. Although. So animation or story, what's more important, Gabby wants to know. Story, always. Story is the one thing, this is when I, when I give my lectures, if you come and see me on August 3rd and 4th, you'll hear me talk about this. Story is the only thing in an animated film that can stand on its own. And what I mean by that, you can have the animation, but without story, there's nothing there. It's just images. The story is what is the most cohesive thing about the whole thing. It is the one element that everything is built around. It's the scaffolding. I can sit down with no images, nothing, just the sound of my voice, my face talking to you. I can tell you a story, and I can take you through the entire emotional journey that you would go on during the course of that film. Everything else is meant to support that story. So the one most important thing out of everything in filmmaking is the story. So I hope I was clear on that. And since I was on that subject, uh, once again, I'm going to mention August 3rd and 4th, uh, I'm doing a master class here in Orlando at the uh, Orlando Repertory Theater, and I'm going to be talking about story. I'm going to be talking about animation, digital painting, just art in general, all kinds of stuff. And I would really love to see you guys there. So that's August 3rd and 4th. If you want to get more information on it, go to Creature Art Teacher. Uh, backslash Orlando 2019 and there'll be you know there's all kinds of information there so uh, YouTube question what was it like working on Mulan with Byron Howard well Byron it's funny technically Byron was my assistant on Mulan and I always talk about how I think I learned more from Byron than he learned from me Byron is just an amazing amazing artist and, uh, and, a, and a great guy and uh, it was awesome to be able to work with him on that on that film. I very much enjoyed it. So he's a, he's a good friend and a great artist, great animator. Yeah, I think he's he's fantastic. Uh, are you always using a cold colors for shadows like you've used here? Uh, yes, I usually try to hit cool colors for my shadows and uh, warm colors in my light areas. Martin Berger wants to know um, if you'd ever do a 2D animated short with Glenn Keane. If Glenn came to me and said, hey man, I want to do an, a, a short with you, I would drop everything I'm doing, and yes, I would do it in a heartbeat. Of course, that's a, that's a no-brainer. And I think he asked earlier um, if there's any chance that Glenn Keane would do a, um, a course for you, for your website. Um, I, I don't know, and, and he's uh, Glenn is actually somebody I want to talk to about that. I'm not. He's Glenn's also a very busy uh, person, so I'm not sure if we'd be able to get him. But it would be a dream because Glenn's got a lot to talk about. Miranda says, "I only have an iPad Pro. Would I still be able to take your creature art teacher courses?" Oh yeah, 
everything I do, you can you can you can do on paper. You don't have to be digital. See, this is one of the things that people. I think we we I've got to start getting out there, to make clear to people. It, it's you know you don't have to be digital. You you can be digital. You can. It's not software specific unless you're doing one of my software specific courses. But everything you know, like how to draw horses or how to do you know my animation courses, all that stuff. That's all. Um, I'm teaching fundamentals. I'm not teaching software. So you can follow along on paper. You can follow along uh, on your iPad Pro. You can follow along on your Cintiq. It doesn't really matter. Matt Yoakum is putting his top, top five animators of all time. Glenn Keane, Milt Call, Mark Henn, James Baxter, and Aaron Blaze. Right on, baby. Thank you. You got to get Andreas Desha in there. What did he do? He did Scar. He did Gaston. Oh. He did uh, Jafar. All the villains. All the villains, yeah. And Gabby's asking me, oh, I'm going to take this one, um, so there's an art style or an artist who I admire. And um, I, I do. I like um, expressive art, ex expressionism, impressionism. And... Um, Oh gosh, Matisse is, and I know this is not Aaron's favorite artist, but Matisse is the artist that inspired me to paint because of the use of color. So. That's awesome. What about Klimt? I do, I love Klimt. There's so many artists, but Matisse, I remember seeing one of his paintings in particular, yeah. and it, as a kid, and I love the color, the way, and it just, his later stuff, I'm not a huge fan of, but his earlier work. Yeah. Is what inspired me in the first place. Well, that's great. Yeah, I love Clint. Uh, YouTube question. Have you ever gone to surfing, gone surfing in Florida back when you were working at animation studios or were you in the in the watch and enjoying the beach? Well, that's a weirdly phrased question. I'm, uh, yes, I did surf when I wasn't so fat and uh, I, I surfed a lot and I um, I did a lot of water sports. If that's what your question is. Do you know if Glenn Keane already has any courses anywhere that are online? That I don't know. I'm going to leave the, the wrist guard off. I'm just going to keep it on one hand. What the heck? Happy accident. Oh, someone just said, don't forget the second wrist guard. <laughs> no, I'm going to leave it off. Andrea Deja An animated Pumbaa. No, Tony Tony Bancroft animated Pumbaa. Oh, okay. No, uh, Andreas animated uh, Scar. And Truben Aquino. Ruben. Oh, Ruben Aquino. Ruben okay. Aquino animated Adult Simba. Okay. The other thing Ruben did was that he went onto the movie a year before any of us and put together an entire uh, booklet of animals in motion. I have a couple of people mentioning the Kyoto thing, and I just didn't know if you wanted to. Yeah, Kyoto, the the Kyoto fire and arson attack and all that. Uh, it's a horrible thing that I just read about today, and uh, I really want you guys to be thinking about them and support them in any way you can. And I'm hoping maybe there's something we can do physically in the future, in the near future, to help these guys out. Um, in Kyoto, Japan, at the, one of the animation studios there. There is a, a, a guy came in and attacked the place, and uh, a lot of people lost their lives. I think there's 33 people that lost their lives, all artists like us. And uh, that's, that's it's a huge tragedy, and I really want you guys to, you know, if we can organize something in the future to help them out, uh, then, you know, we'll push for that. But keep them in, you know, keep them in your thoughts. I always hate saying keep them in your thoughts, but uh, it seems, always seems like a hollow thing to say, but really, you know, don't forget them. Think about them. And there's got to be some kind of fund being started, probably, yeah. to actually help. So, uh, yeah, it's a horrible tragedy that's happened. So, um, do you think an Apple computer is necessary for digital art? They only have Windows. No, a lot of a lot of people work in just Windows. So, no, I don't. 
A YouTube question. I believe the hair is the most detailed and hardest part to animate and draw and to draw. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if it's the most difficult, but um, yeah, it's definitely, it's a, it's a hard thing to draw sometimes for sure. I always uh, thought hands were hard. Hands yeah. Hand, I find hands the hardest. Yeah. Um, dude guy on YouTube asks, Hey Aaron, a random question. What is your most proud physical athletic achievement? Um, athletic achievement? Yeah. Yeah, athletic achievement. Just to do backflips off of um, yeah, I've done bridges. Some, yeah, it's some 60 foot backflips. And back when I was, uh, you know, backflips on, on, on uh, wakeboards and things like that. But um, I don't know if it's an achievement, but you uh, broke your wrist snowboarding. snowboarding. <laughs> can you see that? I don't know yeah, if I yeah. can see that. It, it shows. But um, I, uh, you know, I did a lot of singular sports like wrestling and gymnastics and things like that when I was younger. I was, I was, you know, before I became a older round guy. But um, uh, I, um, I really loved. I used to try to pick up girls at the pier. By like, I, I'd, I'd stand up on the pier and do these big jumps off this off the edge of the pier and backflips down to the beach and land on the beach on my feet and then walk walk away thinking I was a cool little stud. I always thought that was kind of funny. Rick Hunter's asking, is there an animal in motion booklet for sale anywhere? Well, MyBridge, I think, is a great book. Uh, if you look at the MyBridge books, uh, do I have one up there? Birds of Prey. Oh, I know I've got my MyBridge book somewhere. MyBridge um, was a photographer Right before the time of film, like the 18, there it is, and it's called Animals in Motion. Ooh, I just stood up fast. I got a little head rush. Go on webcam. This book right here. This is an amazing book. Um, these photographs were taken probably 150 years ago. And uh, and there's still a kind of a uh, a standard to a reference, um, and what they are are, you know, back in the mid 1800s, late 1800s, Mybridge photographed animals and humans in motion, set up these triggers along a path, and uh, it was before film, before uh, you know movies, and was able to create um, a series of photographs where he could you could get action analysis and so all of these are really wonderful reference and um, as animators we reference these all the time all the time and uh, uh, once again it's Edward Moybridge right there is that in focus mm -hmm. oh, there we go Edward Moybridge and uh, Animals in Motion, there's also Humans in Motion. There's several books out, and I really recommend that. That's probably the number one recommend, uh, recommendation I've got. Are you going to do another animation course, um, let's see, about motion? About motion? That's what it says. It says, well, motion for animation, but your next animal animation course. Mm, I'm not sure. That's a broad subject. I mean, animation is motion. Uh, it's acting as well. But um, yeah, that's that's probably a little too broad of a subject. Although, I mean, everything that I talk about in animation has some element of motion to it. Don't you have animal walk cycles and things already in a course? Yeah. And then you're acting in an animation course? Uh-huh. Sorry, I'm trying to get... But I've got, um, yeah, I do. How did you learn about animal anatomy, skulls, bones, muscles, etc.? Did you study books or real skeletons? Yes, yes, and yes. I mean, I, I collected roadkill off the road. <laughs> I was a creepy kid. I did uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, any way I could find, you know, books. Uh, actual skeletons, um, 
like I said, roadkill, um, anything I could find that would teach me, you know, how animals and, you know, how we're put, to, they're put together, we're put together, any of that kind of stuff. I was, oh, I've always been fascinated by it. Um, what kind of animation, YouTube question, what kind of animation do you enjoy doing the most? Subtle acting shots or more dynamic action shots? I go back and forth. You know, you'll get, I'll get bored with one thing and, you know, want to do something else. So, um, it, it, it changes. So right now I'm adding a secondary light, little reflected light in here. Have you saved yet? Oh, good. No. Nope. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. Thanks, Martin. Viking. So those photos of that horse, they're they're old, right? I mean, that's the from the, the Mybridge. Yeah. Oh, they're from like the 1860s. Okay. Yeah. Why? Oh no, just someone was saying they look like they're very old pictures. Oh, they are. They're very old. But that, uh, that's the point I'm trying to make that, you know, these, those, those were taken 150 years ago and yet are still used today as a standard for reference for movement. clarifying locomotion for animation course yes we are going to be okay good I'm glad you clarified locomotion yes we're, we're actually going to put out a um, uh, a course and, and reference basically of all kinds of locomotion from different animals different uh, creatures human insect four-legged two-legged six-legged whatever we're going to do all of that Have you ever flipped through a Spectrum art book? I don't know that I have. It's a I'm book full of um, many artists, digital fantasy stuff mostly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 of course. Yep, I have. They can have a new one every year? Yes. Oh, Gabby's just suggesting that it's a really, um, I guess, a cool book. Is this California Gabby? Yeah, Gabby. Oh, that Gabby. Hey, Gabby. I keep saying Gabby. I figured you'd know. No, I didn't realize. Sorry. Oh. Yeah, she's been on the whole time. Awesome. Hey, Gabby. And Marshall was only, she was so close to being on the screen. Oh, today. I know. You, you missed Marshall. He just had a doctor's appointment. He was tired, so. Went home to take a nap. Yep. An old bastard. All right, so I'm getting some reflected light in here. It just adds a little dimension to him. Try not to get too contrasty but it's going to get a little bit uh, any chance of a crossover between the snow bear and uh, Andreas's Siberian tiger you know what? I don't know I haven't talked to Andreas in quite a while um, it would be wonderful I don't know that we're going to finish at the same time um, if we do I would love to contact him and see if he wants to do some kind of something like that uh, I'm a huge Andreas fan and uh, that would be that would be a dream come true for me. Caroline wants to know um, animal anatomy book recommendations. Animal anatomy? Um, I don't really know of any animal anatomy book recommendation, a specific anatomy. I do know of some good, you know, creature drawing books by Terrell Whitlatch that I think would be great. Um, but, I mean, you can really find a lot of animal anatomy stuff just right online. Do you think, and this is from me, do you think books will ever just be obsolete and just go away? No. No, not ever. Well, maybe if the... Uh, if they interface our brains with AI, like Elon Musk wants to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a really weird article to read today. I'm sure it was. 
Gabby says that she already wrote Marshall a letter. It's already, it's already in the mail. All right. He's gonna, he's gonna, he'll have he's, to have someone read it. Just gonna say he's gonna have to have someone <laughs> read it for him. Even the large print. Uh, have you ever noticed when people draw humans, they tend to look like themselves? Well, what do you think of this guy? Does it look like me with a long beard? I don't know. I mean, I think it's. He's kind of got broad shoulders like you, and it's a little bit of an essence of Aaron in there. <clears throat> uh, Rick Hunter saying he has an animal anatomy book by Ellenberg and Dietrich. Oh, cool. And one by Jack Ham. Yeah. How to draw animals. He said those are pretty good. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Who was that that said that? That is Rick Hunter. Thanks, Rick. He's a top fan. Uh, Martin Berger says, please tell Aaron I just got his watercolor course. It's so awesome. Uh, I broke my right hand three months ago. Um, but I couldn't wait to try out his methods for painting clouds using frisket, so I painted them with my left hand. <laughs> right on. Hey, I paint left-handed all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kirk Michael says, this Viking looks just like you, Aaron. Feels like it. All right, so I'm going to start adding some highlights now. Oops. A little bit low on Julie, that. Julie thinks the shadow looks like a magical unicorn. <laughs> oh, it does. <laughs> <laughs> and Peter, no, he has not seen the new Aladdin yet. He no, I not. haven't. I'm lame. Could you one day do a drawing demo for Big Cat Cubs? Oh, you know what? That's a great idea. Yeah, I will. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to start knocking back the drawing. There we go. Knock that drawing back just a bit. When I do that, it shows me where I need to hit my darker values. Right now, I'm in my bright values. Craig Smith is an animator, storyboarder, um, artist living in Pasadena, and he's going to be seeing you at Lightbox. Oh, I can't wait. That's awesome. Um, I'm really looking... Whoops, I'm just on the freaking wrong layer. Um, I'm really looking forward to uh, Lightbox. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun had by all. There. So I'm just hitting some highlights now in his beard. Oops. Not in the shadow. And I think the people that said you don't draw humans a lot just maybe haven't seen all of your live streams because you've done humans quite a bit. Yeah, I know. I thought so too. Yeah. They're just saying good, good for showing those those naysayers. Oh, I didn't. I don't think there are naysayers out there, but I, yeah, I mean it's it's definitely uh, it's just something I do for sure. I think I do it a lot more than people realize. Ah, too bright. A lot of people hyped about the Lion King. Yeah, I'm pretty hyped about it as well. Um, I know the review, the reviews haven't been good, but I um, I still want to see it. I mean, everyone's comparing it to the original. Well, that's natural. But um. So want to see it and watch it on as a standalone piece and just see 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 what it feels like. I've been really excited about it. 
Uh, Twitch comment. My bridge also had a crazy life story, including killing someone. Oh my god, I didn't know that. <laughs> wow. Uh, Twitch question. Do you have any experience with uh, other animation techniques? For example, two and a half D animation. No, I don't. I don't. I mean, I have done some animation over live action, you know, with Roger Rabbit and that sort of thing, but that was, that's my extent. Um, YouTube question. This isn't really a question, but the shadow on the sail looks like a, yo, a unicorn and I can't unsee it. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. That's the, my hidden, my hidden stuff. Everyone loves unicorns. Yeah. Someone's asking why the rivets on the right side aren't as uh, defined as the other ones. Oh, I haven't hit them with the highlights yet. They'll get. They're gonna get. They're. They're due. What do you think about Disney remaking all of their own movies? Well, they're their own movies. They can do whatever they want with them. Um, I don't. I think it's kind of cool as long as they're you know good remakes. Why not? Disney is in the business of making money. That's their job. They have shareholders and they need to deliver to the shareholders a profit. That's business. That's capitalism. That's how the world works and you know where we live now. And so like it or not, if they have a way that is going to deliver on bringing more income to the company, they're going to do it. I mean, I per I prefer original stories, but I totally understand. Oh, so do it's I. a business. They're running a business. This is a way to, you know, they know they're going to do well in the box office. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's a it's almost a guarantee that they're going to turn a profit, which I totally get. But you got the diehard fans like Beauty and the Beast, one of my favorite animated movies of all time. Mm-hmm. Only second to Sleeping Beauty. Um, I did not like the remake, and that's just me being a sourpuss about it. I walked out on that movie. Yeah. I paid for it and then I left. That's okay. That is your right. Just the original was just you. Why try to, you know, redo something that's already so great? Uh, YouTube comment. Hi, Nick. Tell Aaron and Vedanta Nic Nicola, Nicola from oh. Manchester says, Woohoo! <laughs> a bit of a live stream and had the best time in Chester. Awesome. Nicola! She was the first person, I think, oh, besides Ariel, that I, I um, talked to there. She was so cool and a great artist. Oh, yeah. Everybody was Her great. Her children's book. I mean, they're all great, but the children's book she showed me was I just... I love that children's book. It was so good. Yeah. So here, I'm just kind of darkening up areas that I feel need a little accent. don't like is that ugly highlight right there. don't like that. Painted that wrong. There we go. Adding more shadows. Trying to get a little bit more bold with it. Probably going with some dry brush as well. At some point, we get a little rough things up a little bit. But not quite yet. Martin Berger wants you to come to Austria and do a drawing course there. He says they have an incredible zoo in Vienna. That's what I hear. Well, we um, 
we'd love to keep you know we're trying to cut back on our travel a little bit but if there's enough of a draw to get us there then we'll be there our travel is kind of killing us at the moment uh, I, all you guys know we've been doing a lot of traveling lately so we have to cut back in order to do what we're supposed to do which is create courses for you guys and uh, it's hard to do that when we're on the road all the time and so we want to cut back just a little bit so we can provide for you guys a little bit more uh, hi Aaron I remember you showed you showed book on live stream a long uh, a long time ago which had old ink draw, uh, paintings of Siberian nature which was what was the artist's name can you show the book again if you know what I'm looking for thanks uh, I don't think it was Siberia you might be thinking of Bill Berry William Berry uh, it was uh, all they were hand-drawn um, observations from from life right here it's not Siberian uh, if, it, if, if this is the book you're talking about William Berry and um, they're all images from the Arctic. Can you switch the camera? Oh, yeah. So they're uh, all images from the Arctic that are drawn from life. Um, really great stuff. So it, this is one of my favorite books. It's uh, William D. Barry. Uh, that might be the one you're talking about. I'm not sure. Um, whether I use books or YouTube videos or your courses to learn, do you have any advice to digest information better so it, I don't get overwhelmed by it? Uh, take it one piece at a time. You know, you don't have to. You don't have to take it all in at, all at once. Just take it all in. You know, just a chunk at a time. And focus, you know, focus on an exercise here and there. Just do that. You don't have to do everything all at once. Just an exercise, you know, at a time here and there, and you'll make your way through it. So I'm just loosely going in, hitting some of these alias, hitting some of these deeper shadows. I have someone asking about your um, the shadows and the thought process. Um, it says, wouldn't the spear shadow line be closer to the left wing on the sail? Um, maybe for me, I'm looking at where the shadow on the helmet, where it's going across the helmet on here. It might be a little closer. I might move it over there. But I mean, that's it's all speculative. Because the sail might be moving as well, right? Yeah, but I mean, in this particular look right here, it's, you know, it could be, yeah, I mean, it could be anywhere. So I'm getting some nice texture happening in the beard. The one thing I'm not crazy about is that it's, I'm, I'm using a violet over that orange and it's kind of going to a black when I, when I work over it. I kind of wish that that was all I'm going to try something I want it to be a little warmer so I'm going to take just want to see what's going to happen if I do this take that I'm going to shift the hue Uh, have, you heard, have you heard about the movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Have you heard about this? Have you heard about it? Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yes, I have. Okay, now I'm going to switch it to here. Do the same thing. It's getting hot in here. Yeah, it is. It's getting hot in here. So you can, I can shift 
colors about there. Let's see what that looks like. Select, deselect. That feels a little better for me. Uh, Nick says, didn't you show a Russian artist book also? Oh, there was, there was Shishkin. I, I showed Shishkin, which I don't have uh, right now. Uh, there is, I have, there's a Russian painter by the name of Shishkin, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't ink drawings. So I'm not sure what artist this person's talking about. Twitch comment. Hey, Aaron, this looks super nice. Watched your collaboration with Proko at the zoo. Amazing stuff. Huge fan. Much love from Sweden. Hey, thanks. Thank you. So now what I want to do is I'm going to come up here to, that's on multiply. I'm going to come up there and I'm going to grab some nice bright color. I'm going to grab my, go to my brush. I'm going to grab my dry, there was my dry brush. I just want to lightly just kind of brush in with my dry brush. Some, uh, some color. Jeffrey Roberts wants you to put a little dragon on his hand. Oh, that's a cool idea. I think he means like a real dragon, but you could also do like a tattoo or something, right? That's what I thought he meant. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. It's your world, you know? It's your thing. Put another little happy do tree in there. Do what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah, baby. So I'm just going in with the dry brush and just kind of roughing up the beard. Or someone says, a flying dragon in the distance. I like the tattoo idea, though. Julie Kukreja, sorry. One of my favorite animal artists is Robert Bateman. Yes. When I was first saw some of your animal paintings, it reminded me of him. I think that's what first drew me to your work and how um, I'm a, and now I'm addicted. But curious if you've seen his work. Bateman was one of my earliest influences. I've got about six Bateman books all over the place. And uh, we've actually shown together uh, when I was younger. And so... Um, We've sat together and he's given me lots of advice on painting in general and yes. He's a great guy. Incredible uh, environmentalist. I want to see you list everybody you've ever met. <laughs> it's like well known in the industry. Yeah, I've had a few. That would I've be a long book. It would. I've had a, a very blessed life in that sense and a lot of cool people encounters with Aaron Blaze <laughs> yes we know Martin the left hand shield is still missing yep and he's going to leave it I'm gonna leave it Um, Aaron, how difficult would it be to animate this guy with the things on his shoulder? Um, this one's awesome as usual, by the way. With the things on it? Oh, I, you know, it, 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 uh, it would be difficult, but uh, not impossible. I don't think he's too complex. Are you still planning on releasing your own books? Um, I'd be really happy to own each one you complete. Yes, we just haven't gotten there yet. Uh, we definitely want to get our sketchbook uh, out soon. Dustin just got done uh, scanning all of my sketches, so that's kind of cool. Luke from the castle just said hey, just Luke. joined. Luke Buscott. Luke. We've got. Vanya, Vanja, I'm sorry, I, I don't know if the J is silent or Vanja. I don't know. So 
I'm going. I'm just going through right now and just kind of roughing them up. Oops. Silent J. Thank you, Vanya. Silent J. Is that like Silent Bob? Yes. We'll just call her Silent J from now on. Just kidding. There's not a lot of questions right now for some reason. All right. Do the thing, people. Do the thing. Yeah. Ask the question. Ask the questions. <laughs> seeing all the England friends. Me Lauren, too. Lauren um, Black, I believe she's um, from Scotland. She just joined us. Yay! Kind of stiffened up on me a little bit, this image. But I'm just going to keep rolling with it. Have you ever tried using watercolor pencils? You know what? Um, only once I enjoyed it um, and I've never I've just never done it again not because I didn't like it I just haven't I just never did it again I would like to I would like to try have you seen this have you had a <laughs> Um what is your daily schedule like what's a life in the in the in a day in the life of Aaron Blaze lately it's been uh, trying to get up and get to the gym which 50% of the time I make it 50% of the time I don't uh, and it's me rolling over and saying, hey, you want to go to the gym, Vedanta? Uh, um, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> well, we were going to yesterday, but then the yard needed to get... Yeah, man, uh, I walked outside. We had this, like, incredible... Uh, because of the heat here, this incredible and rain and uh, um, an infestation of fleas in our backyard. So I went out there and uh, attended to the backyard and just tore it apart in lieu of working out but that was kind of a workout it was it wasn't bad what else do you do <laughs> draw always oh hard. yeah so then so then it's you know get, get some food and then um and then i sit down and i start drawing and it depends on what project i'm working on at the time and uh and so now i'm, I'm just going through and hitting some details here and they're lighting details um it depends on what I'm working on at the time, and uh, uh, and it might be Snow Bear, it might be an illustration project, it, you know, getting ready for a live stream. Um, you know, it's always there's always something that we have to do. So, Darnell saying he's super late. What made you choose a, to draw Viking? Um, I wanted to do a human today, and I just felt like drawing a Viking. It just popped into my head. I just thought it would be fun. Do you, when you draw out of your head, off the top of your head, do you gravitate towards muted colors or vibrant colors? Uh, muted, probably, and then I find accents to do the uh, to do the uh, vibrancy. Because we're getting questions now. Uh, what's the difference between a Siberian and Bengal tiger, how they're built? Siberian tigers are much heavier. Siberian tigers are the biggest cats in the world. Bengals tend to be leaner, a little bit smaller. How old is Achilles, and how did you get him? I think Achilles is probably about six or seven. He's over here near me. Oh, there he is. The and uh, my son-in-law found him as a stray in Arizona and brought him here. And that's and then my son-in-law and my daughter uh, moved into a place that doesn't allow pets. And so I said, I'll take him. That's how he inherited my good buddy, Achilles. A kill kill.
So I'm just going through and hitting details here and there now. Hello, Aaron. What's the name of the chalk-like brush that you're using? I'm currently on your website, and I'm trying to buy it. Nick, do the thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, from my original... Um, is it number seven? Yes, it's number seven from my original custom brush set. Available. Actually, if you sign up for my uh, newsletter, you'll get this brush for free. Estefania writes, I'm following Tim Hodges' cartoon animal course, and it's awesome. What courses are coming up? I've got a course on perspective coming up. Uh, good job, by the way, Tim, if you're still on. I've got a course on perspective coming up. I've got a course on how to draw birds of prey. Um, we've got courses on layout, uh, concept design, um, sculpting, all kinds of stuff. We've got a lot of stuff in the hopper that are going to be coming up over the next year. Kayla writes, I feel so bad I can't make it to the Orlando Masterclass, but I did get your subscription. Um, to Creature Art Teacher, and I'm loving it. Your classes are incredible, along with all the other teachers, too. Awesome. I like hearing that. Thanks, Kayla. Have you ever used voice recognition technology in a lift <laughs> in Scotland? Was that somebody asked that? Yes, Martin Berger. <laughs> Have you ever used... <laughs> Alright, I want to do some lost edges now. I want to rough this painting up a little bit and give it a little bit more character. And uh, so I'm going to go through and just put a layer on top and just kind of, I want to get, to get it more painterly. Tim Hodge is here. Hi, Timmy. And he said it is nice to hear folks like the course. You rock, Tim. He does, doesn't he? Alec, yes, we were doing Jimmy from South Park. Have you seen this? Have you had that? <laughs> Have you seen that? Have you seen that? So I'm trying to, if you can see, I'm trying to really get this roughed up and paint a little bit more painterly. Uh, I think it's going to look a little better. So I've got this layer on top, and I'm kind of painting around the character, and I, I'm liking it better already. Lisa Campbell is looking to buy a Cintiq 16 and get it... Um, when she returns to the States in August, she lives in Amazon in Brazil. Ooh, wow, that what sounds cool. What type of bag or backpack would one um, travel in? Like, what's the best thing to carry a Cintique? Um, I've got my 16. I've got it unzipped right now, but my 16 sits in this. It's a pretty de decent size. You know, it's, a, it's small enough that you can carry it on. What brand is that? Uh, this brand is... Is it on the side? Sure. On the, that side. Is that safe? Uh, solo? Solo. Solo. I'm solo. Oh, that's really heavy. Oops. What was I drawing? Oh, yeah. Stuff? Forgot where I was. So now I'm just, I'm really trying to be rough with it. I want to get more painterly with this. Uh, hey Aaron, are you a fan of Frank Frazetta and did you ever meet him when he was alive? I never met him when he was alive and I was a huge fan. I mostly do uh, metal album cover commissions and he's a big influence on, on, my, on me personally. Yeah, um, you probably came in later because I was talking about as a kid, um, he was one of my biggest influences. I was drawing. Tony Cipriano does some amazing. Yeah, reproductions. Rosetta of reproductions, uh, maquettes, right? Is yeah. That what called? I mean, amazing. Does he have a website, Tony? I don't know. Well, he's on Facebook, definitely. Yeah, Tony Cipriano. The twentieth man to walk on the moon. Yeah, it may have, may have been, although there's only been twelve. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Oh, 
Jim was the 11th. Martin Berger says it would be amazing if Nick would be on one of the live streams. Nick's never going to be seen. You know, he is on the live streams. You just don't <laughs> see him because he's, he's behind the scenes. Yes, he is. He's watching you. Sometimes it feels like... Somebody's watching me. <clears throat> Does your knowledge of applying highlights and shadows come from life observation? Really enjoying watching this picture come to life. Yes, it's all life observation. Yep. And I'm just, I'm thinking about reflected light. Thank you, by the way. I'm thinking about reflected light. Um, let me blow that up for you. Uh, how it, you know, bounces off objects. All of that. This is really stiffened up. I've lost some of the, the, the freshness of the drawing, but uh, I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm kind of happy with. What causes that? Um, I, I think I tightened up a little too much as I was rendering it, and uh, and that causes it. <laughs> for like, some of the whimsy or something. Yeah. Can you recommend any books on storytelling? I'm working on my own comic book. Yes. My art and, um, is decent, but I have trouble building the story. Um, story by Robert McKee is excellent. And um, Save the Cat. It's more script writing, but it's still excellent. Uh, is ex you know, th Those two are, th those have been my biggest influences as far as work goes story structure and writing and all of that. Mike Balzar wonders, is there even a Nick? Really? Is, is there, there a Nick? Is there a Nick? Does anybody really know what time it is? Does anybody really care? <laughs> there we go. Now, see, I'm trying to, rather than just being so, you know, what's happened is, Everything is delineated. I've gone in and just delineated everything. So I'm trying to soften up some areas here and not be so harsh with it. Then I can go in now. Some brighter. Tim Hodge says the shield looks like a Target logo, so maybe you should use this in, in an ad. Come pillage Target for all your back to school needs. <laughs> that's, that's a fair nice. That is nice. And Erica Bay is halfway through Tim Hodges' course, and she's loving it as well. Oh, excellent. Well, Erica Bay is, I think, one of our biggest supporters. We love Erica Bay. Awesome. I had the pleasure of meeting her. Um, CTN. Is it Burbank? Is that what it is? Yeah, it's at CTN. At CTN yep. last year. And her lovely husband as well. They were really cool. Frankie. Frankie. Oh, that's right. I wonder if I give him really blue eyes just a touch, if, uh, if it'll look too forced. Rowan Descalar uh, suggests that you draw Nick on live stream. But then he wouldn't be the international man of mystery that he is. No, he wouldn't. But yeah, we're going to have to do that. And I mean, since he's in the witness protection, I don't know if that would be a great idea. It's, yeah, it wouldn't be the smartest thing to do. <laughs> Tony's site oh Tony's website is uh, www.ciprianosculpture.com check it out Tony Cipriano is amazing I'm going to get that guy to do a, a course for us if I the last thing I do. I want a Frazetta reproduction of his so bad. Oh yeah. So what bad. principle of drawing or animation took you the longest to understand and what made it click with you? You know, I don't know. I mean, it's all hard. You know, there's nothing that's easy. Um, I don't know. I think dr drawing, you know, loosening up. That's probably one of the hardest things for me to get a hold of. And I, you, you'll see that I still occasionally get caught up in working tightly. And uh, one of the greatest uh, tools that helped me loosen up was working digitally. Lauren wants to know how does light work on metal textures? 
Well, you got to observe it. You'll see that it's super reflective, right? I mean, really, the way a, a, an object uh, works with light really depends on its reflectivity. Metal obviously is super reflective. Cloth, not so much, you know, and, and everything in between. And so you want to take those factors into consideration when you're uh, figuring out your um, reflections and all of that kind of stuff. And uh, oh, sh shoot here, there we go. Because I want. I want to get some scratches and dents and so it's really about that type of thing you want to you want to think about um, what that material is made of and here I want to go it's a little bit kind of bright right here you really hit my highlights on the helmet Rivets. Riveting, rivets. Isn't it riveting? It's riveting. I guess it's raining in Scotland. Scotland! Right Scotland! It's raining. Raining. That's weird. It's not raining here. I, I thought it was never supposed it doesn't rain in Scotland at all. <laughs> it's like in England. They don't get rain. Oh. Yeah, just adding some details here and there. When you decide to work tightly, I struggle with this as well, but since watching you, um, I've gotten much looser. Yeah, and you know, it, it, it's really about um, finding your place to, to tighten up and, and keep other places loose. That's the, that's the biggest thing. You know what I forgot to do is this face do you paint. Use, do you use texture or hair brushes to do hair? Or, or do you just use a regular brush and draw it? I'm just, do, well, for this, I'm just do, using a regular brush and a, uh, and a texture brush. I, I'm like a rough texture, not a hair brush. I'm going to try something here. See what this is going to look like. Oh, I like that blue. Yeah, but the way I've got it, the blend mode, I've got it set to um, overlay and it's not working right with the other colors. Is that supposed to be a shadow or markings on paint on him? It's supposed to be paint. Uh, I might have to do it traditionally. What do you think about doing it like just right across his face? Yeah, like a strip, a stripe? Yeah. Like under his eyes? Yeah. Over his nose and stuff? Yeah, that'd be like cool. Like if I, I'm going to do it on another layer. Just because the shadow is confusing a little bit with the... I'm going to have to paint, I'm, I'll paint the shadows and everything in on this something like that now granted you know, keep in mind I'm gonna have or should it be like a streak across his face yeah cuz that kind of almost looked like uh, superhero eye mask oh that's cool right into the beard. Oh, like the paint just went right into <clears throat> the hair? Yeah. Oh, nice. I've seen tutorials where you use an overlay layer as your base light layer. However, I've been seeing less and less of that technique. Do you still do that and or not? If not, why? Uh, no, I still do that. Matter of fact, I did it on this. Oh, I still do that a lot. Live strings are everything I've waited for. Heart, heart. A 
Okay, so now what I want to do, I want to get brighter in the areas where the light is hitting. says this drawing isn't Nick. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a lot of suggestions about the paint on the face. Some people say just under the eye or thinner line. I kind of like the way it's looking. Well, I'm going to finish it out first and just see, see what we end up with. Got to let me finish it. Someone's okay. saying, couldn't you add the, the paint over the local color layer? That's what I did, basically. I, oh, I could put it over the local color and layer. under the lines? Is yeah, that, that might, that actually might work. I'm going to, I'll try that. But I think, I think doing it this way, um, I don't know, it, it adds something yeah. kind of nice Dramatic. to it. Dramatic. I like the way it's turning out. Freedom! Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Doug Brown. Oops. Hey, Doug Brown. Oh, you know Doug Brown? Yeah, we're going to see be seeing Doug Brown in... Uh, at Lightbox? Lightbox. Yeah, he's, he's also he's, he's, the, he's the guy that was trying to get us to come out to Scotland oh, uh, okay. next year. Oh, you know what I need? I need a I need a dry brush. Kind of a mid tone blue. Looks pretty cool. Hey, Aaron, if you see this, have you used charcoals? How do you like them? <laughs> the reason I'm laughing is I've I've done tons and tons of charcoals on my live streams, and and uh, I've got a whole charcoal course on my website. If uh, if you're interested in charcoal and want to learn, go to my website, creatureartteacher.com, and uh, I've got an entire course on painting and charcoal. I love charcoal. It's my preferred medium right now. As a matter of fact, let me get one of those charcoals. I'll show you charcoal. You want to see charcoal? Yeah, I'll take that one right there. These are these are the charcoals that I'm doing nowadays. So that's this is how big they are. Oh, you can't really. Yeah, I can see it right there. But the, yeah, they're big, big giant charcoals that I've been doing lately. And um, these are all going to be going up for sale pretty soon for anyone that might be interested. They're all for sale for uh, 3000 a piece. Just putting it out there, US dollars. If you're interested, let us know. I've got a whole bunch of them. I've got about six of them, big giant ones like that. There, just get a little messy around here and there. Lauren Black says, please come north. Please come north. <laughs> That's a Scotland, another Scotland request. And this Viking looks, I can't say that word, but thank you. It looks great. <laughs> Let's get a little smear on this helmet. There we go. Uh, Kurt on YouTube asks, have you ever read My Story Can Beat Up Your Story by Jeffrey Schechter? I have not. A GoFundMe has been set up for the animation I art studio. I just saw that. Okay. Yep. A, a GoFundMe has been set up for the animation studio in Japan called Help Q 
Kion Kioani Heal. That's uh, help, and then K Y O A N I Heal. H E A L. Um, just go to uh, www.gofundme.com backslash f backslash help dash Kioni K Y O A N I slash heal. Aren't those forward slash? Or slashes? dash, sorry. Forward slash. Is that forward slash or yeah. backslash? Oh, I guess it is forward slash. Man, I've been saying backslash all this time. For like time. a long time. It's okay. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, that would be awesome to uh, help out. So um, I know a creature art teacher is going to be helping out uh, as much as we can. Hold on, I'm going to do this. Um, as well, so um, Nick, if you're listening, yeah, we're going to be donating to that. And, uh, you know, anybody else, if you can swing it, these poor people, I mean, they, what a tragedy they've had happen to them. And uh, if you can help them out in any way, please do it. We're, we're a small community, you know, us artists, and we got to help, you know, watch out for each other. And for what happened to them is just horrific. I'm not sure I understand what the, which drawing board do you use? Does that make sense? Well, if you're talking about Cintiq, I'm using a, 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 a tablet. I'm using a Cintiq 32 uh, Pro. I'm kind of feeling like I want to crop this thing. And just do his upper body or or something yeah or I've got to get I've got to get uh, I've got a lot more to do on this how long have we been on this we, what time is it, it oh, is 317 so, so we've been on it for two hours two hours and 17 minutes kind of seems like just like 10 minutes <laughs> but I'm not drawing him <laughs> you know. but um Manny will buy one of the charcoals for 100 bucks <laughs> Right on, baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, we'll trade. You get that for a hundred bucks, and you get me to Africa for a hundred bucks. bucks. Solis says this reminds him of um, of Hamish from Braveheart. Oh yeah, that's cool. I like the blue paint. It's really cool how it streaks on the hair and the, it's on the helmet. And yeah, it's neat. Thanks. Just trying to get, you know, he would have blue kind of splashed on his on his. Beard Cirque, or, oh, his shirt. Cirque, which is his tunic here. Cirque. So a few little spots. That is one mean looking Papa Smurf. <laughs> is that a comment? Yes. <laughs> Rick Hunter writes. Uh, I think I overdid it. Let me take some of that off. There we go. Much better. Better and better. I wonder if this should go dark. Uh, put that down there. Right there. Multi no, we need to multiply right there. Here. Let that go dark. More dark in here. Not 
So I'm just not a lot of questions right well, I'm, now. Yeah, and I know I'm I'm not talking very much right now. Sorry. Hold on. I'm trying to think of what I want to do with this. Oh, Nick says we have a four o'clock call. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. I I didn't forget. I mean, I I remember now, but uh, I'm gonna have to finish this up pretty quick. I wonder. I'm gonna lose some edges here. I'm gonna go to my dry brush. Just lose. Just get a little blur in there. Just lose some edges. It's one of the things I love using the dry brush for. I love love creating lost edges. It kind of gets your piece to kind of sit a little better. There we go. Yeah, people asking for fog or splash water yeah, spray. Yeah, I, th I definitely think there needs to be something down on the bottom. And I've got the brush to do it. I'm just not sure. I got to get the right values in here. All right, now let me find the brush. Oh, got it. I got to find. Don't have it. I had it saved in the right place at one time, and then uh, it didn't save there. It got moved. brush that I have that does some beautiful uh, like text oh, like bubble textures or spray textures that's what I'm looking for it's from a friend of mine did it go I'm gonna have to look for it later because I'm not finding it I hate when I have to do this and start scrolling and wasting time with you, you know, for you guys not seeing anything other than me doing this there's splatter I don't know if that's the right splatter yeah, they want rain, they want snow, they want fog. You can only get one. <laughs> it's, <laughs> like, it's raining, snowing, it's foggy, and there's... Oh, you know what I want to do in the background? I, I wanted to do this earlier. I get a little... Um, Martin Berger, I can't wait for the next traditional drawing or painting course by Aaron. Uh, acrylic, squash, oil, pencils, whatever. He's just waiting for it. Well, it's uh, it's coming. It is coming. I promise. Dang! I can't believe I did that. Well, let me come up here. lightning bolts and sea creatures. There we go. Some clouds coming in. So. And then. The heck with it. I'll just make my own. Here we go. File. New. Let's just make our own brush. We'll do a splash brush. Uh, five inches. Five inches. We'll make, okay, 300, okay. Boom. All right. So here, I'm going to turn off. I'm going to go black. And I'm going to 
Ram. Grab that brush here. Are you going for? Uh, water texture, but I'm doing something a little different. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm I'm experimenting. So when I'm experimenting, I'm I'm having a hard oh, okay. time speaking at the same time. That's fine. I don't want to do too much. Okay, so I'm going to turn off that background, uh, edit, define brush preset. Okay, now we've got our brush. I jump back over to here and well actually let's go back to here turn that on turn this off and I'm going to shrink this way down and now I want to turn this on and I'm going to pull I'm going to do um, shape dynamics we're going to do an angle jitter we're going to do size jitter we're going to do Flipping the X and the Y, I want to space it out a lot. We're going to go to scattering. Uh, count jitter. Little mini brush making bus. Yep. Uh, I'm going to do the count. There we go. Not quite sure that's the splash I'm looking for. No, it's not. But let's see what we get. I'm not sure what we get out of that. And I might, I might have too much on the. And then you can also make it bigger or smaller if you want bigger splashes, right? Yeah. If I blow it up. Whoops. Yeah, those round those round ones weren't the right thing to do in there. There's definitely. Uh, let's just see what it looks like. I'm not. I don't think it's going to be right, but let's just see. Maybe kind of interesting because I can add some smear to it. a big splash that's come up. Don't like it. It's not what I was looking for, Doug, on it. But then I can go in, I wonder if I go in here. Nah. Not liking it. But I do think we need need something in here definitely like a splash just doing it more traditional what sorcery is this <laughs> what magic are you making? I guess the making your own brush thing is... Um, did you have a course on that? Yep. If you get my digital painting course, I have a whole section on creating your own brushes. YouTube, uh, do you ever get stuck on a painting like you just can't figure out what to do? If so, how do you tackle it? Well, you're watching it right now. Because <laughs> I'm struggling on this painting. I wanna, I'm not quite sure where to where to get this get it to finish here supposed to be splashes of water
Nope. We got a couple of brushes that I haven't used. I'm experimenting with. And uh, I don't like them. Got to get right in here. Sorry, I'm going back for those other. Where'd they go? Do you label the brushes a lot or no? I don't. And th these are, this isn't, this is a brush that the one I'm looking for is a brush that a friend of mine did. Not sure if it's this one or not. It's a nice little spray. Oh, yeah. You know, on top of the... The bigger chunk of water. Yeah, I think we're going to go a little darker with it. I think both of them need to go darker. Just a touch. There we go. Just a little bit darker. Sorry, this is uh, I'm getting a little boring here because I'm trying to figure this out. I think the other thing too, I want to, I want, I want him to, I want the light really to be the focal point up here. I'm going to do like a gradient. See if that, see what that does. Is this guy on his way to pillage the UK? Uh, yeah, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Uh, let's use a gradient here and see what happens. Someone wants ice on his beard. Yeah, see, this is feeling good, like he's in, sh maybe they're down in shadow. That feels better, don't you think? Yeah. Now, now our attention is going right where it's supposed to go. I still think we could crop this tighter, don't you? Well, we don't, you know what we need? We need some kind of, um, hmm. we need some kind of design on the sail. That's what we. That's what we need. Tell me to tie it all together. Yeah. So I set it to yeah, overlay. Yeah, with the foreground darkened, it does bring more focus to his face. I'm just gonna try something really quick. Let's see what it looks like. I'm just gonna do some kind of what's a what's a Viking looking design. See, I set it to overlay so it looks like it's going into shadow. Oh, wow. Oh, I like that, that symbol. See, because somebody is saying, it, I really like it, but the thing to me is that it looks like it's warm and calm, and Vikings um, are usually more like in a rough weather and cold. And yeah, I agree. If I, if I were to do this again, here's my target. <laughs> if I were to do this again... Um, I would uh, definitely come up with a different, like more dynamic pose. How about my signature logo in the sale? <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. That's a funny idea. How's that look? Or maybe something. Oh, someone mentioned the dragon tattoo. Can oh it be yeah. The same as the insignia on the sail. Oh, I don't know that that would. I like what you're doing with the red, the orange on the sail. I'm just trying to create something that adds some interest overall. This is feeling a bit dead. I'll clean that up in just a second. Like something like that. Martin Berger says you're. Classic Aaron Blaze shadow is missing, but I don't think it is. It's, it's not. I did the gradient. Yeah, you did it in the front, and then also across his face and beard is the shadow. Yeah. 
It's a pretty heavy shadow. Oh, and I, you know what I never did is uh, those ropes in the background. Maybe I should just get rid of them. I think we can get rid of them. That was there. And Mia, who I think is from, she says, on the Norse, the Norse Sea, um, can have plenty of warm colors and sunshine. Oh, absolutely. Just because they're, um, it's not all, all cold weather up there. I agree. Uh, have you met Sheldon Bor Bornstein? Do you know who that is? I don't know who that is. Just trying to add a little bit of suggested color here and there. I think that set sail adds so much to it. Oh yeah, I totally agree. Now I'm going to experiment with a little bit of cropping. Just an experiment. Save it. I might square it up for uh, Whoa, what is that? Why did I go red all of a sudden? Oh, I just covered, filled my background with red. Get above it there. What if it, what's that look like? So I'm trying to get a square for uh, Instagram, see what that looks like. What do you think? Do you like that better? I kind of like that better. I like it. I'm going to go a little tighter. So let's go back to here. Hold the this. lines on the sailor are going over one of his wings a little bit, though. Did you notice that? Oh, I got to fix that. I got to clean those up. I kind of like that better than what we had. It's less busy. It's more dramatic. It's just got more drama. Up. More drama. Drama. Where was uh, what layer was our? I forgot what layer that I forgot to label it. What layer was the um were the designs on the flag? Oh, did I do that on top? I think you did. There they are. Nope, that's not it. Yeah. Why wasn't it race? Oh, it's just delayed. I'm going to do one more gradient right here. Brian Johnson just joined in. Brian! So it looks great. It's hot and wet outside. Brian Johnson. Oh, man. I, He's working outside, yeah. I know, I'm sorry, man. It's hot in here, too? Not like that. <laughs> I know. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> there. I like this. I like this composition a lot better. I might even try it one more time. I'm going to bring this down. I don't want to get too close to the tops of the... The helmet? Yeah, the helmet. I want to get just a little tighter. Feel a little bit more intimate. Better before the crop, I think, because I like the hand resting on the edge of the boat. did too but I felt like it was I felt like there was too much to look at let me try this I'm gonna save that as Viking Warrior 2 save okay now let's go back going back There it is. See, I don't, I don't, I don't like that hand. Which one? The sec, the bottom hand? Yeah, I gotta get in there and work on that more. I hate that hand. I hate the way it looks. But um, I'm gonna go with Viking. Open. Viking Warrior Two. So you're saving both of them. I've the got both version, saved. Yeah. And they have cropped. Oh, I just opened, I'm gonna file. 
I like the composition of it like that. Oh, I... But... <laughs> I, uh... What'd you do? I... Oh, forget it. The, I just... I saved it as Viking Warrior 2 and then I kept it open as Viking Warrior 2 and undid everything. Oh. <laughs> just an idiot. Oh, so you don't have the crop version? No. Okay. Should be there. Right here. Let me see. No. Yeah, see, I, uh, it's not you there. You saved it over it. Yeah, I saved over it. But anyway, we got to get going. Yep. So I'm going to blow this up so you guys can see it. I'm going to crop this. Oops. Right to there. See, I still like that. I don't know why that background, why that got painted in red. Come on, crop. That hand looks horrible. Someone said, Julie said, do the um, old trick with covering the hand in water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There we go. Uh, Zoltan likes the uncropped version better. Yeah? Um, How's it feel to want? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was fun, you guys. So there's my, my Viking warrior. Uh, I hope you guys learned something. I had a really good time. Let me blow that up. There, you can see it better now. Um, one of the things on here I really want you guys to see is just finding, you know, loosening up, getting loose edges and that sort of thing. That was a lot of fun on here, doing that. And uh, But anyway, and I got a little repetitious in the, uh, in the, mar in the foreshortening of the arm. Um, it's all kind of the same mark. Those, there's certain things in there I would go back and, and change, which I probably will between now and the next time I see you guys. But I hope you guys learned something. I had a lot of fun. Uh, remember, uh, go out there, do something nice for somebody. Uh, remember we, about our, our, um, our master class on August 3rd and 4th, uh, uh, creatureartteacher.com forward slash or backslash <laughs> Orlando 2019 uh, check it out it's gonna be great it's gonna be two days uh, Saturday Sunday at the repertory theater in Orlando where I'm talking about uh, anim everything animation character design story uh, digital painting all kinds of stuff so we're gonna have a lot of fun there and um, uh, also keep you know uh, the GoFundMe um, I, I don't have it in front of me uh, Nick if you can put that back up uh, on the in the comment section for the folks in Kyoto at the animation studio there please do whatever you can for them they've got a GoFundMe site set up and uh, anything we can do to help them out uh, would be great oh just say slash okay I'll just say slash, slash. Uh, but anything we can do to help them out I think it would be great uh, but anyway until next Tuesday I'll see you guys again uh, go out there I, I have a great weekend uh, do something nice for, you know, put some beauty back in the world. That's what we do as artists. Do something nice. And uh, with that, uh, I will talk to you guys later. Vedanta? Bye, everybody.